What up, what up, what up, what up? It's Wednesday, so you know what that means. It's Pop Dust Presents. I'm your host, Decent. Today, man, listen. How many million records sold? Uh, about, if, you to, if you had to estimate, how many? About 50 million a date. We still yeah. got more work to do. We yeah. got more work Rough do. estimate, yeah. 50 million yeah. records sold. Mm-hmm. You can't, it's hard pressed for you to find anything in the 90s that this man hasn't touched, yeah. but legacy aside, we're here to talk about the future. We got the one, the only, Dane Grease in the building. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang. Wave gang. Yes, sir. Big home. Uh, yeah. Appreciate you for stopping by. So, uh, anytime. Yeah. For everybody out there, you know, just give them a quick rundown. I know, you know, it's a sh- pretty short show, so we don't have all the time in the world to get through all your accomplishments, but, you know, okay. the, the, the top of the list, you know, quick. Quick hits, quick hits. I was born mm-hmm. by the bank, by the river. Uh-huh. In a little town? In the town of the town. Uh-huh. And so I... <laughs> now, fuck with you. <laughs> now, um, uh, keep it serious. Um, my first record I ever produced that came out publicly is the tribute to Biggie Smalls, Where Was the Love Big Papa? Uh-huh. Then went on to do um, If You Think I'm Jiggy, Locks first single, four cuts on uh, Money, Power, Respect. Then on to do the um, DMX, Get At Me, Dog. Uh-huh. First single, 13 cuts on um, Miss Arca Hell is Hot. Uh-huh. Uh, Mary J's Blas, Wu-Tang Can, speeding up to um, Max, Bill- Max Biggavelli, my little brother, Mixtape Wave, French Montana, did all the mixtapes on that. Um, to my own company, Vacant Lot Productions. Couple movie scores, X and Wounds, Cradle to the Grave. Uh, Riff Raff, I mean, like, everybody in the whole industry. Once again, that's the short list. Right, short list. Short, short list, short right. list, short list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, once again, I know you're a legend, and hopefully by now y'all know he's a legend. Yeah. But just give people a little backstory of how you got into production and the music industry in totality. Well, um, well, you know, just like anybody, man, we started in the basement, man. We started up uh, um at my old apartment, um, on 129th Street. That's why my thing is Dame Grease 129, um, 129th Street in Harlem. You know, we started banging out, put the group together, NIB. Like we just started banging the crazy Sams. Uh, talent shows are different things, and um, we battled another known Harlem crew called Children on the Corn, Mace Cameron, hey. Bloodshed. Boom, and from there, you know, we um, everybody collectively known each other. Big L was the first guy at the young people group that got signed with DITC, started going on. And then, um, show sure enough, uh, well, just real quick, me and Mason went to Yonkers, and actually, my big homie Joaquin Dean Rough Riders hooked me up with um, these other rappers they got called Locks and DMX. We put that sound together with a Harlem sound, with the lyrics from Yonkers, and then we actually all made history. In a nutshell. Boom. Yeah. Bye bang. bang. <laughs> yeah. So, with all your experience, all your knowledge, you know, yes. in the music industry, let's jump a little bit to today's climate. Right, you know? yeah. So, one of the things that mm-hmm. always fascinated me with hip hop is the fact that it's probably about the rappers right now, but mm-hmm. when it started, it's about the DJs. And mm-hmm. I personally think that producers don't get enough credit in regards to dictating the tempo right, of right, right. where hip hop goes. Because you have different producers who kind of, you know, usher along different periods of hip hop. Like you had the Neptunes, you had, mm-hmm. you know, Shot for Real. Plays, you know, my guy, guy. But yeah. back mm-hmm. in, you know, back around the time, you, you know, you started getting heavy in the game, there were guys who were like stationary, you had your primos, you had your skis, you had, you know, anybody you could think of. What was the climate like being a producer back then versus how you feel it is today? Dude, that's a good question. Cause actually, um, when we started, you know, um, like I said, at that age range, you know what I'm saying, of course, primos, golden guard. Ski, actually, by the way, that's my cousin some type of way. We'll figure that shit out later. <laughs> but um, at the same time, um, you know, I, I really wanted a sound and, and, and a whole unique thing mm-hmm. that you knew was dope, but you cannot pinpoint it that is just New York or regional. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So with the production that um that I did for Locks, X, Noriega, Nas, all the, the um in the early stages, I really want to um to give you like a universal sound. Yeah. yeah. You know, you gotta do research to find out we from New York, Harlem and Yonkers. Yeah. But yeah. the sound of the music you can't you couldn't um put it one place yeah you know the only thing about mm-hmm. it that you know can be attributed to it, be, it being a new york sounds the fact it was real guttural like right get at me dog real right guttural it was know? fucking train station underground fucking cobwebs coming off the thing yeah. the sound yeah exactly. which is new york look fucking cobwebs in here like you know what, you know what i'm saying <laughs> home of the cobwebs yes sir bang, bang. <laughs> so mm-hmm. with with that how did you 
I want to say crap to sound specifically for X because get at me dog stop being greedy pretty much his whole first album that sound that gutter visceral sound is attributed to DMX what was the thought process that went into creating that specific sound for him because he's a very unique artist yeah it, well actually um I'm gonna have to give it up you know what I'm saying it, it, it was um the good brother Joaquin Joaquin Dean CEO of Rough Riders you know he um he's from Harlem him and Darren they from Harlem but at the same time, they just knew it's like, yo, if you put these beats that you got, that's very theatric and very New York feeling vibe uh-huh. with these artists we have, which was the locks of X at the time and Casino, shout out to Casino, was on um, with them at the time, it's like, we'll have something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It took a little minute, a little pulling, tugging, 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 tugging. Well, about time, went up there and, um, you know, uh, X Lock came out spitting some. I just threw a tape on, like, go to that. Like, whoa, that shit is dope. Oh, we kind of buy it. So it was like, it, it was a good thing. It's like, you know, you just mix a lot of pieces from the city together and then you get actually classical shit. Yeah. So yeah. Mm-hmm. on top of your list of production credits, you go, you've also scored movies as well. Yes. What was, yep. what, what's the difference? I mean, it's all music, you know, in mm-hmm. a sense it's relatively hip hop, but what is the difference between crafting something for an artist versus crafting mm. something for a specific scene or a movie altogether? Actually, it was a super big difference. It's nothing like producing a record, mm. you know? And um, the only thing that actually gave me an upper edge, because actually working with Earl, working with Dog, his lyrics was theatric. Mm. So it was nothing put for me to put theatric oh, music wow. with it. Right, right, right. You know, and then um, with the case of Harry, so I was, uh, selling the records, uh, platinum singles, different things. When he went to do the um, do the movies, the producers was like, "Can we get that same sound that you do on records in the movie?" So that was a part of me coming in and really putting in the the big orchestral opera. You know, like I use like symphonies and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And down to basic fucking Casio shit. So, you know, just keep it all around it. But, you know, the, the production company, Silver, uh, Silver Pictures, you know, they wanted, the, they wanted that sound with the movie. Because actually it's the same sound that went around him in the music. So it'll be the same sound that's going to be in the movies. Definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. That's so dope. Yeah. So with that, do you feel like you having that experience, you know, mm-hmm. doing scores, Yep. When you transfer back to the music world, you know, you came came from it, you know, a little bit more, I want to say wiser for lack of a better term. Did you mm-hmm. approach production differently when it came back to producer for rappers? Yeah, it made me fucking kick ass in production. <laughs> let's, get it, let's keep it honey. If I can produce fucking two blockbuster movies, now I'm going to make a beat? Oh, God. It's a walk in the park, pretty much. Yeah, it's like, it's oh, God. Like, you know, whoever's going to get the production now is like grand production, you know? So it was a big difference. Mm-hmm. So once again, you being you know a legend in the game, you being around for so long and still being active, still being sought after. Mm-hmm. I want you to give a comparison in regards to the artists back then versus the artists now. You have some that still mm-hmm. embody you know the spirit and sense like you know of you know Wu Tang and you know DMX and guys like that, but the temperament and is a little bit off in the sense that. They're not necessarily doing it for the culture. They're more so doing it for, you know, the looks or, you know, the gram, as the kids would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is, like, the huge difference between artists then and artists now? Me, myself, I actually does not put everything into the same category, mm-hmm. in the same box. And that's where a lot of people go wrong at. Mm-hmm. A lot of people actually like something they know and they love and mix it what's going on now and mix this with mix this. You know, and I always go back to the first step of being a fan of music, uh, of loving and appreciating music. If it's from the disco, from the ever I was born from. If it was from um, me coming up, you got N.W.A., Public Enemy, Leads in the New School, Tribe Called Quest. So many different aspects of music that's very colorful. Mm -hmm. Some got meaning, some is gangster, some is just fucking art. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, and I always keep that same mentality or, 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 or the business and the craft that I do. And I never actually put myself on a shelf to say, that's that and this is it. Mm-hmm. To me, that everybody's a dickhead. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because music is always going to be colorful and always going around. And just like a, a quick example, you might be a little younger, but I'm pretty sure some of these guys, when we was young, we liked the Rick James and fucking Prince. 
Okay? And them motherfuckers had fucking hair coming down in tight ass pants. Look at Next the first look at the first <laughs> rap successful music, Sugar which Hill is Hill. Graham Sugar Hill Gang, Grandmaster Grand Master Flash, Flash different things. It was actually more costume wise. Yeah, and that's the, you kind of with see, the lyrics. You kind of sense that a little bit now today because you got you know. Yeah. Rap is taking the more rock star approach, you know, rocking ripped jeans. And it's chokers, fucking dope. You know, and things it's like dope. that. And even when we came out, actually, um, it was a group of people that actually used to tell me, you think your man barking with a chain around his neck is going to work? <laughs> so with knowing that, with that insight, I can never look at anything. I have to respect for what it is. If it's me, it's me. If it's not me, it's not me. But do that shit because that's art. You know, you can't stop art and art. The, the fun of art does not stop. It's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Now, you got your piece, take that to own that shit. Mm -hmm. But it's going to keep going and going and going. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Speaking of musical influences, let's yeah. talk about some of yours. You know, what mm -hmm. are some of the things that you grew up listening to? And then with hip hop kind of taking shape, what were some of the artists that you got into? Yeah. And, you know, even now, what are some of the things that you just like to listen to and relax and, you know, vibe out to? Well, <laughs> <laughs> pretty loaded questions. So. Right, it was like gang, 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 bang. All right, well, actually, I, I, I'll keep it a thousand. Um, music I actually like to listen to, vibe out to right now mm -hmm. is actually a 1970s group called Cortex, which actually is a French group, which actually the the the, the vibes and, and the soul and the um, it's not even speaking English, but at the same time with the groove of the music, it's actually what I actually play almost every day, walk, waking up on the off season and different things. I'm just playing my people's like, what the fuck are you playing? I'm like, nigga, this is the groove, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Same time, you know, and that's just actually a relaxation thing mm -hmm. with clearing my head until I get back into ah, all the yeah. yelling and shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's what it is, but, um, and that was, the fucking course was so broad. But bang, first part, you know, we're, um, we're coming with um, producers like uh, Bomb Squad, producers like Dr. Dre, producers like Q-Tip, mm -hmm. producers like different persons, you know what I'm saying, really, you know, knowing that it's an all-around craft, not just one way, which actually I've I done myself, to coming up to the future with um, artists that's actually dope. I love Mikos. They dope as shit. They are the leaders of what the fuck they doing. Mm -hmm. And that shit is dope. And with that, um, I like little young boy 6'9", yeah. from Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? I like heart. I like strength and energy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you know when you get the game where everybody's actually the same, that's when we all start throwing yeah. up. But we need somebody to stick out. And there's always gonna be an artist, and it got to always be an artist that sticks out, that go against the grain, that says, this is me, like it or fucking love it. Yep. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. not only did you craft the sound for X, but you, like you mentioned, you know, you pretty much Crafted the sound for Max B and Fresh Montana. Free to wave, by the way. Mm -hmm. See you when you get home. See you soon, Max. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. pretty much that style is, you know, permeated not just, you know, New York hip hop, but hip hop in general. You have a lot of, I don't want to say clones, but a lot of people are influenced by mm -hmm. Max B. Yeah. How did you, Max, and French link up to create that, you know, wavy sound, for lack of a better term? That's a good question. Actually, Shouts out to Mike Murder, which is actually Max's older brother. You know what I'm saying? It was at the time when actually Max just split up with the uh, Bird Gang Dipset thing. He was really going solo. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, Mike Murder, you know what I'm saying? We was um, in a bar on 135th and 8th Ave Harlem. And you know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, Grease Man, get my brother, man. I need you to get my brother. I need you to get my brother. You know, he's out there going crazy. I need you to get him. At first, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm working with him. But then just the passion of what he was saying was like, no, get my fucking brother, please. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, cool, man. Tell him to come to the studio. I'm saying, sure enough, he uh, came to the studio. And this is when he's actually starting his own, you know, he's him thing without a group or different things. And we started going and we just started cranking and banging now. What we did, PD3 first. PD3, um... Our pocket just came home, boom. We started putting that together and we started like mashing the grooves. Cause then Max always had his own groove already. Yeah, you know definitely. what I'm saying? From Bird Gang, the Dips, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Then we started mashing the grooves. It was like, oh shit, you got some shit with your man. And I ain't, and um, 
Actually, it, it was one of my first albums, Goon Music. Yeah. And he did one song on Goon Music, Connecticut Kush. Now, Goon Music 1.5, I flipped it around, and I only rapped on one song, was Goon Music, and let him rap on all the songs. So it was a, a thing that was going already, and just rearranged the motherfucker because he do what he do spectacular, and then we just took from there, and then I um, just started cranking up the sound. That's where French came in with the Cocaine City DVDs. We saw the Banging Them, the World Stars. French was actually real young and shit, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, trying to get his groove. So, you know, me and Big, boom, boom, crank French out, got him to a groove, bang, got some shit popping. You know, then Max got locked, you know? But he be out soon. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So, mm -hmm. you've been around legends, okay? Yeah. And I'm not using hyperbole in the least bit. You've mm -hmm. been around legends. When did it get to a point where it was like, yo, this is just a day in the life. Like, I look to my left, I see Nas, I look to my right, you know, I see Hov, you know, mm -hmm. I got, you know, Puff hitting me on my jack. When did mm -hmm. you just realize, like, yo, this is this is my life at this point? It, it kind of started like that in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Like, you understand, like, it's like um any realm of anybody that's doing music. You are bumping to guys doing music, right? Yeah. So yeah. the guys we doing music that we all bumping to was Cameron, Mason, Big L, us, Mino, me, Grease with the Beats, different anything. So we all knew each other from being hungry and doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. God bless, boom, we came up and everybody became who they became. Mm -hmm. So it was only right that um, you know, the 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 um the whole wheel just keep unfolding. And then if it's a realm of a person being into the realm, that person is gonna be special in some way or another because that person would not be into this realm that, you know, we're doing. Yeah. So, you know, I don't really know who was the next legend or star. I don't know that. I just know to do the shit that I know I do right. And whoever I'm fucking with, they know I do their shit right. And then about five more years, there's something different. <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. this is a conversation that I have, you know, plenty of times with people. Yes, sir. And hopefully you can answer this for me. Mm -hmm. Why is it that not just rappers, but rappers, producers, anybody mm -hmm. that pretty much help cultivate hip hop culture. Why aren't they respected in the same in the same fashion as rock legends? Like, you know, mm -hmm. you know, Rolling Stones could go out on tour tomorrow, sell out, people mm -hmm. won't call them wash or they need to hang it up. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with Metallica, other, you know, more seasoned acts, but why is it that when it comes to like a big daddy Kane or like, you know, mm -hmm. L L, when you see those guys, people are looking at them like those guys are still rapping? Mm -hmm. Like why do you feel like there's like a you know, there's so much ageism when it comes to hip hop music. That's actually called stupid shit one. And actually two, where are you from? From the Bronx. You're from the Bronx, right. Okay. So being from the Bronx and wherever you, if the hood or not, wherever it's in the Bronx or shit, um, you know for a fact, what's the newest pair of sneakers and what's the latest, you know what I'm saying? Like what's the last pair of sneakers and what's the newest pair of sneakers? Mm -hmm. Right or wrong? True you would actually get influenced by that. Yeah. By saying, this is new, this is old, this is new, this is old. Yeah. But only individual to self can say like, this shit is dope. I don't give a fuck how old or new shit, whatever the fuck it is, it's dope. Yeah. Now, we're saying something like that. That's how the rest of the world is. Not just us from the boroughs, or not just us from any hood, or not just from anything. What's fucking dope is dope, yeah. no matter how it go. Dope is universal. You know what I'm saying? Right, and does it make a difference? So it's like, now, right this second, right now, there is more new artists, older artists, vintage artists, and every artist right now circling in the globe, doing tours, making money right now this second. Big Daddy Kane and Coogee Rap have showed out shows tomorrow. Lil Uzi Vert and Lil Boosie have showed out shows tomorrow. Everything right now in hip hop and music is actually at its prime right this second. Definitely. You know, with with um with people um you know, just hearing one radio station, they're like, oh my god. But in reality, the whole demographic what it is, the music and the hip hop has actually changed the world seventeen times over again. And it got more to go. Yeah. So we got more to work to do, man. Definitely. Yeah. So mm -hmm. jumping into now, you yep. got a lot of work coming with, you know. Not just you know veterans in the game, but up and comers. Mm. You got you know yeah. stuff with Davies. You got yeah. stuff coming up with Method Man. Mm. You know, 
tell 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 the audience like how you keep going and how you keep you know changing the game and reinventing yourself even in today's climate. Um, I don't do a lot of interviews. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna front. I'll do a lot of you interviews. Hear that? You hear that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying you don't do a lot of interviews, but we got yeah. him on Pop Dust. You right, know you know. Shout out to Pop show, Dust. You know what I'm saying? Show prime time. <laughs> right. I'll do a lot of interviews. I don't. I don't sit around in a lot of industrial ciphers for people to say, "Oh my God, look at the ratings." I don't do that shit. Yeah. I just actually stay on the vibes and the magnetic of the people and of the world. You, you stay doing dope shit. Right. In a nutshell, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like everything that what it is is um that you know being a musician and, and being cool, you know, not being a fame whore and none of this other curricular shit. I love the music. The music saved my life, and the music saved other people's life. Mm -hmm. So I just stay true to that. You know what I'm saying? And you're always gonna know the wave. You're always gonna keep it. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going into for anything else. You're going into for knowing great music. Thank you, God, for being a part of making great music and actually doing beautiful things. So I don't really get contests of what's hot, what's not. Yeah. I go with vibe, you know? You hear that, y'all? Don't ride the wave, be the wave. You know? Hey. <laughs> for real. So yeah. if you had your ideal collaboration right now, who would it be? It could be past, present, dead, alive. If you could do a track with anybody right now, who would you do a track with? Another loaded question, my bad. Nah, that's cool. <laughs> that, that's cool. That, that's fucking broad as fuck. Um, shit, man. I have like Rick James, Max, fucking um. Rick James and Max would be Yeah, fire. man, with um, Snoop Dogg, I do the ad-libs. X got a yell in the back, you know what I'm saying? Like, like <laughs> it'd be some whole fucking gumbo shit, man. Like, you know, I ain't with me musically. Yeah, that's the greatest song I never heard, yo. <laughs> <laughs> nah, real shit. <laughs> this would be like something like totally like shocking. Like, what the fuck? This is dope. I'm no, sorry. Definitely. So, right, you yeah. got any um shows? Any appearances? Any anything? coming up that the viewers could check out and tune into? Um, well, as you know, we just left South by Southwest. Um, me and Sway actually presented a war to Rick Rock, you know what I'm saying? The dope Super thing about Star. that is like Sway yelling from the balcony, you a legend too. Man, you that's my guy, too. guy, 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 guy. Sway is my guy. Like I've been known for a thousand years from the Sway and Tech show. And even when he moved to Harlem in 2000, me and him walked around. I said, hey man, you cool here, man. This is this home shit. Same thing if I go to Bay, I'm home too, you know what dope, I'm saying? That's dope. good brothers first, you know? Mm -hmm. dope, so and I met Rick Rock for the first time and I heard all this shit, it's just dope as fuck. That was dope. What was that experience like? Nah, it was dope as fuck. Dope as fuck. Cause I mean, I, I knew I knew the wave and all that, bang, 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 but when he, um, remember, G, when he, he threw his piece out there, like, dun, 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 I went up, I was like, oh, that's that nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got them pieces, B, Nate Dog, Jay, come on, man. And that's the shit, man. That's what it was like. It was, it was a beautiful thing, you know what I'm saying? And actually, I presented the award. I'm like, this is fucking dope. Hell yeah. yeah. And that's why Sway was like, nigga, you a legend too, huh? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it's cool, though. You know, when um, beautifully musically, when everybody could get together and just we do what we love first. Now, we love money. We love getting paid. We love taking care of our family. But we love music. If we didn't love music, we fucking wouldn't even know each other. Definitely. Well, mm -hmm. We definitely appreciate you stopping by. Like you said, you, you do a done. lot of interviews. So the yep. fact that you came and blessed us with this interview and dropped some mm -hmm. gems on us is greatly appreciated. For Shout out to Cinnamon. It's for real thing. agency, you know what it is. Don't get it twisted. Hello. Thank you for hooking us up. But mm -hmm. we definitely appreciate you as me, a hip-hop fan. I want to personally thank you for all the right. good music you provided to help thank me into the man that I What's am up? today. Yep. I get to do stuff like this. So We still got work to do. It ain't, it ain't done. It ain't done. You see me, like I, I'm still so sexy. It ain't... We still got more time. <laughs> you know what they say, black don't crack unless you, you smoke know. it. But shit, let's get it. We can still got more shit to do, man. Come on. Definitely. So yes, sir. Once again, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. He's Dame Grease. I'm decent. This is Pop Does Presents. Stick around. We got Telegrate coming up next.